Recently, I've been looking at ways to improve my orchestral sample library's programming workflow, which is by far the most time-consuming item in my task list when I'm writing music for media. I found a method that has been working pretty well for me and I want to share it with you. Before I get into it, I just want to take a minute to invite you to read my brand new blog. It's called The Sound Design Diaries and it's a monthly journal where I talk about sound design for media composers, recording techniques, programming synthesizers and many other things I think you might enjoy. You'll find it both on my website at alessandromastroianni.com slash blog or as a LinkedIn newsletter at the link in the description down below. Make sure you subscribe to be notified when a new article comes out. Let's get back to our topic. Most sample libraries that feature long articulations sampled in different dynamics use the modulation wheel with CC number one to crossfade between them. This is a well-established practice that has been working well for decades. Most composers I know, and I'm no exception, like to slightly exaggerate the change in dynamics to add expressivity to the MIDI performance. We typically do this by adding expression automation to the MIDI part. In most cases, we also like to tweak the vibrato intensity provided that the library we're using has this feature. This means that when you play a part in, you're often juggling with three different MIDI faders which makes the performance very hard to get right. Or as I most often do, you end up playing a part in focusing on dynamics with the mod wheel and opening the MIDI editor to manually draw expression and vibrato at a second stage. I noticed that about 80% of the times I was doing this exact same thing keeping the expression more or less consistent with the modulation curve except higher, and when needed, this is one is a bit more part dependent, the vibrato more or less consistent with the modulation curve except lower, but only over a certain threshold. So I started using the MIDI transformer to copy in real time the MIDI controllers I was sending from the mod wheel to the expression and vibrato with a built-in variation from the respective values. I'll show you how to do this in Nuendo. The workflow is, of course, identical in Cubase, and in my experience, many DAWs have similar tools, so you should be able to replicate this workflow in your environment, whatever it is. On any MIDI or instrument track, make sure you have the inspector panel open and look for MIDI inserts. You want to look for a transformer here and add one instance. I'm also going to add right after this an instance of the MIDI monitor. In this way, I can monitor everything that is sent from my controller and converted by the transformer. Now the transformer is not doing anything at all, of course, so if I press any MIDI key, I get the MIDI number and velocity. If I move my mod wheel, I can see that it shows MIDI CC1 and the relative value I'm sending. For the upper part, we want to set up the type of message we're looking at intercepting. I'm going to select type, equal, and controller. This tells Cubase to filter MIDI CC controllers. After that, I'll add another row and select value one, which is the MIDI CC number, and select modulation, which is CC1. The lower part is where we actually need to tell the MIDI transformer what to do with this data. I'll set this up. Type, set to fixed value, controller, and then value one set to fixed value CC11. Make sure you set the bottom right menu to insert as we want to add expression to the MIDI events generator rather than transforming mod wheel data into it. If I open the mini monitor now and move the mod wheel, you'll see that now for every mod wheel movement, I'm also generating a MIDI CC11 value. This is good, but remember that I actually want to have the expression always higher relatively to the mod wheel value. I can do this by adding an extra row, selecting value 2, multiply by, and then going to type in 1.4. This is just a value that works for me in most cases, but it really depends by the library you're using and your personal preference. What we just set up means that the value of expression is always 40% higher than the mod will, and we can test this right away in the MIDI monitor. You can stop here if you want, but I personally want the expression to have a rather subtle effect and stopping here doesn't work too well in the lowest part of the mod wheel. For example, when modulation is at 10, expression would be at 14, which means almost no volume. So I'm going to add the fourth row and select value 2, add, and I'll type 35 in the parameter 1 column. 
Again, this is just a number that was for me, but I do change it depending on the library I'm using. This essentially has the purpose of offsetting any expression value by 35 on top of the 40 variation we set up before. And now let's test it right away. I'm going to use one of my most used sample libraries, Cinematic Studio Strings. Works pretty well. Now, vibrato. The vibrato is a more delicate matter. This is actually not something I always use, so I'll add it to a second slot of the MIDI inserts and simply bypass it when I'm not using it. Sometimes it's just better to pencil vibrato in from scratch. We'll copy what we did for the expression in the upper part, except I'm going to add a condition. I'll add a row that says value to bigger and then type in 50. This tells the transformer to only do its thing when the module value is higher than 50. Then, very similar to what we did before, set type, set to fixed value, controller, and then value one, set to fixed value, and this time I'll type CC2, which is the MIDI CC, which is most often assigned to vibrato, even though this is absolutely not as standardized as modulation and expression. In some libraries, it's MIDI CC21, all the Spitfire ones, for example. In other cases, it's MIDI CC14. You need to check your library and change this value accordingly or change the value your library responds to, to CC2. Next, I'll add a multiply by 0.8 of value 2. This preset basically tells the MIDI transformer to modulate vibrato by 80% of the value set by the module, but only when its value is over 50. Let's test this again with Cinematic Studio Strings. A quick tip, make sure you to arm the record output to track button in the MIDI inserts menu. In this way, you will actually write the MIDI data in the region and you find them there to tweak as you like after you recorded them. I really hope you found this useful. Let me know what you think in the comments and make sure you subscribe to my channel if you want to support my work. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.